Welcome to our live web event. Thank you very much for joining. Today's topic is deploying cloud commerce with Zora. Uh, we promised that we were going to have Sean Price on, but Sean's on an airplane because, as Sean says, customers come first. So in replacement for Sean, we've actually given Travis Huck, who's an RVP of sales here. First of all, before he joined Zora, he was one of the first App Exchange customers on planet Earth. And secondly, he's been at Zora for more than two years, so he's seen the entire evolution of the online billing market. Also, we're very fortunate to have with us Madhu Rao, who's the Director of Solutions Engineering. And she's a lot smarter than me, so I'm not going to be able to tell you very much about what she does. But she's a good engineer, and she works very closely with customers. And I've heard the feedback from the customers that tell us, partly because of Madhu's interactions, that the installations and the integrations with Zora go extremely well. So we're very fortunate to have these two experts online with us today. Uh, we're, we have only minor logistics. There is a control panel over on the right-hand side of your screen. And you can ask questions from that. Please ask any questions via the control panel. If you're having audio problems or some other technical problem, uh, please send something to the, on the chat bar or on the question panel. But if you have questions, please put them in there. And then we will respond to all questions at the end. Uh, we get a lot of questions at these events. And sometimes people like to ask us somewhat confidential configuration information. Feel free to do so. We won't repeat your question on the air. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, just simply mark your question private. Put the word private in front of it and send us the question, and we'll get back to you. So thank you very much for joining. At this time, I'm going to turn the time over to Travis. Uh, and thank you very much for attending. Thanks, Grover. Uh, thanks, everybody, for attending today. Really appreciate it. Appreciate your time. So really wanted to cover you know, uh, commerce for the cloud and what we're doing, uh, the shift to cloud computing, the different kinds of commerce models and challenges that we see in the cloud, and then talk more specifically about our product set, uh, Z-Commerce for the Cloud. And then Madhu will show you a demo. So but real, you know, first, I wanted to quickly, for those of you who are not familiar with the company, um, wanted to introduce Zora. Uh, we're lucky enough to have a fantastic set of senior executives, a great set of investors uh, that include Mark Benioff, CEO of Salesforce, and a very strong board that includes uh, Scott Thompson, the president of PayPal. Uh, we've got uh, a very impressive set of customers. Uh, you can see some of their logos there. Uh, real quickly, we are one of the fastest growing privately held SaaS companies around. Uh, experienced over 400% growth year over year uh, in the past year. Uh, the growth has been phenomenal across all sectors, uh, SaaS, online media. Uh, you can see, again, a, a larger set of our customers there. Uh, and one of the highlights coming from last quarter was we booked $1 billion in net new annual committed revenue volume. So quite an achievement for, uh, for the company. Quite proud of it. Uh, also have uh, garnered many uh, enterprise clients, including uh, EMC, Rico, Reed, and, and many others. Uh, let's see. Um, next slide. Uh, this, whoop. So wanted to just, um, for those of you that don't subscribe to Gartner, you may have seen this, but uh, this really caught my eye. Um, the shift to cloud computing um, is, um, uh, you know, was marked by, uh, you know, 2008, there was actually the inflection point where server volumes fell uh, as, uh, you know, in terms of net new units, server volume actually fell as you've seen growth of companies like VMware and, and you know, virtualization, uh, you know, when the cloud took over, what we're seeing is really, uh, you know, a huge shift uh, in the market from physical to the cloud. And as I say this, you know, 2008 being the, the inflection point. So, you know, everybody's heard of the cloud. You know, we're not preaching anything new here. Everybody thinks the cloud is interesting and fantastic. But the main question here is, how do we make money from the cloud? Because as most people know, the business model is quite different when you look at the cloud, and the billing use cases are very different. Uh, so let's look at, at some of those in detail right now. So the first one that we see is customers want flexible packaging and pricing. Customers want choice. They really, um, in many cases, want to start with something that allows easy onboarding of new customers. Either this is the free, this is the 30-day, this is the put in your credit card and we're not going to charge it until day 31. Uh, there are all kinds of strategies, but 
the, the basic strategy is to get people on board and then smoothly ramp them up as they need you know, different features uh, or capacity. Uh, so we're seeing this a lot in the cloud. We're seeing it a lot in, in companies, uh, you know, again, like HD Cloud, which is, uh, which is on this slide here. But uh, the message is give your customers choice. The next thing that we're seeing is that the cloud is recurring. Uh, so subscription is the natural way to do business in the cloud. It's not perpetual. Uh, it's not like buying. You're subscribing. And again, as our customer box points out here, there's uh, you know, uh, easy ways to get people on board and then move them up as they need more capacity. The third thing that we're seeing, um, and this is, again, one of the more popular use cases that we're seeing in the cloud, is usage-based pricing. And not just only usage-based. Sometimes it's usage-based combined with a monthly subscription. Sometimes it's multiple units of measure. Uh, the cloud lends itself to usage, and people have come to expect it, as Amazon has really set market expectations here, that things like bandwidth and storage get sold by gigabytes, and things like compute resources get sold by the hour. And then again, companies are combining those together to make up larger plans, gold plan, platinum plan, to fit the individual needs of customers. The fourth use case that we really see is that the customer life cycle is very different. When you look at a subscription and you look at the cloud, you see that a customer relationship is long-lived. It's not a once-and-done transaction that we used to experience in the old ERP world. And Teen has got a great story here that he talks about the early days of Salesforce, our CEO, Teen Zhou, who was employee number 11 and chief marketing officer there. He saw that you know, in a typical month, a sales rep might book two new orders and 10 or 12 upsell orders uh, or add-on orders. So throughout the customer life cycle, you'll see many of these things that we call sort of amendments to the initial subscription. And you know, in the cloud, you need to be able to handle things like proration and co-termination. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to bill correctly. And we find that that use case is critical in being able to sell on a subscription basis and in the cloud. What else are we seeing? We're seeing a move to partner billing models. We're seeing a move to marketplaces. Uh, everyone has Apple Envy. Every, wants, every, every ecosystem wants to have their own app store. So we're, in the cloud, we're seeing things like, uh, you know, like public clouds where you know companies break bulk and sell to customers uh, you know direct or through partners uh, we're seeing you know platform as a service where companies like Microsoft are allowing their partners to come in and, and virtualize what they do for the cloud we're seeing vendors that used to sell solely direct now sell over the web and now they're selling at marketplaces like the Google Google Apps marketplace which we think is, is very very exciting um, you know, we're seeing, you know, the ability to be able to sell in any marketplace in any way to be a competitive advantage. Maybe there's going to be, you know, a cost co for the cloud. We don't know, but we do know that being nimble and being able to sell with partners in conjunction with partners, direct or in any manner that customers want to buy, is a very key use case. So, what's the problem? The problem is that current infrastructure and technology is geared toward the SKU, description, price, quantity methodology that we see supported by ERP systems. And what is needed is a system that understands that long-lived transaction, the ability to price and package flexibly, the ability to change those packages as customers' needs change and as the market dictates change. So the key thing is the ability to meter, price, and bill. I'll say it again, meter, price, and bill. These are the three key elements that we see uh, in the cloud. So you know, all these things that I pointed out are really friction points. And so you know, when we talk to people like Lou Tucker, who's been a longtime customer uh, with Sun and has now moved over to Cisco, you know, 
there are issues that you have to solve in order to get a product to market successfully and launch it and sell it the way people want to buy it. And in order to remove that friction, you know, we uh, have been working with cloud providers and really that's the whole uh, impetus of our, of our launch and, and something that I'll spend the next few minutes talking about, which is e-commerce for the cloud. So is e-commerce for the cloud, what is this? So it's a product that we've been working on for over 12 months. It was built in conjunction with some of our largest uh, customers in the cloud, uh, people like EMC, people like Tata, people like Sun, Zeta. We've actually taken input from these companies and seen how they want to go to market, how they need to sell, what kinds of resources they're selling, what are the units of measure, what are the charge models, how do they want to combine these charge models. And with these, we've come up with, um, with a set of you know, uh, commerce offerings for the cloud. So uh, we think e-commerce for the cloud is a very complete um, set of, of, you know, a complete commerce solution that covers all the main use cases that we typically see, um, the ability to price and package. So we include many pre-built charge models. Uh, we give you the ability to price for on-demand, reservation, one-time, recurring, usage-based, tiered, overage, or the ability to combine many of these together. We handle the subscription management. So this is not only the creation of the initial subscription, but handling of the ongoing subscription amendments, renewals, cancellations, tying those to provisioning events, and everything that you need to do through our APIs. We include the ability to meter. So again, we enable you to create your own unit of measure and sell on that unit of measure if that's the way your customers want to buy. Um, we also give you the ability to bill. So that means collect electronically, that means send an invoice, that means to uh, collect payment any way that a customer wants to pay. So how do we deliver this? So uh, many of you who've you know, been with us for a while have seen our, our, our sort of a product stack, but it's grown over time. So uh, we call this the Z-Commerce platform. And along the bottom, we have basic uh, you know, functionality like multi-tenancy, PCI security for, for uh, payment security, redundancy. We have a very strong API layer that allows you to uh, you know, programmatically do anything through the API that you can do through the user interface. We have a customization layer uh, that allows you to extend Z-Billing to accommodate your own use cases. And then across the top, you can see modules like the product catalog, subscription and amendments, uh, account management, the ability to do our billing operations, payment operations. And then, of course, we've got out-of-the-box uh, integration with many of the popular gateways. We've got our out-of-the-box integration with Salesforce that we call Z-Force. We've got our taxation module that we call Z-Tax. And we also have a PCI-compliant hosted storefront that we call Z-Store. So, you know, really our focus as we, as we talk about the ecosystem is to partner with best of breed companies across the value chain, across the order to cash cycle. And this now allows us to very quickly snap together solutions for our customer, customers that leverage the components that they may already have in place. So let's talk specifically about Z-commerce for the cloud. We have four basic editions, and the first of which is the service provider edition. So again, we've got customers that sell direct, people like Tata, that sell direct to end users uh, and who want to be able to charge, again, based on usage, um, meter, bill, and price. We've got an embedded edition, which you can really think of as billing in a box. These are the kind of uh, you know, products that we're working with folks like EMC, resellers, ISVs, other folks that need billing. They may be part of a larger ecosystem, they may not but they need to have billing and it needs to be fairly easy to snap together with, again, whatever infrastructure they have in place. We're seeing uh, the marketplace edition. Now this is to, again, address the many-to-many the -many ecosystem uh, kind of scenario. And many of you that might be familiar with Jive Software have seen they've just announced their own uh, app marketplace. And then last but not least, we have the private cloud edition, 
which allows you to do chargebacks. Uh, you know, for large companies, we're seeing that are that supply and host their own infrastructure. Uh, these folks want to be able to charge back the parts of the business that leverage that infrastructure. So with that, I wanted to now turn it over to Madhu, who can actually give you a demonstration of Z-commerce for the cloud. Thank you, Travis. Good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Madhu Rao, and we are glad to have you with us today. Like myself, I'm sure everyone on the call is experiencing and is excited about the opportunity cloud computing has brought to us. Cloud, in my mind, has truly become real and, and, and is elastic. Today, you can buy compute resources, storage, uh, bandwidth on demand and, and pay for it as you go. You can have software provisioned for you in minutes. There is no need to ship, install, configure, and make, wait for months before your hardware is put in place or it's your software made available to you. Now, all this is creating uh, a significant change in how we do business in the cloud. And that's why uh, the topic today is the key the 10 key consideration you need to think through when you're doing business in, in the cloud. From pricing and packaging, which is truly the most important aspect of doing business in cloud, because you may want to price on demand, a reserve models with higher SLAs, maybe there is location-based prices based on where that service is made available to you. You need to price and, and tax and bill for it appropriately. There could be off-peak hours uh, rates or free trials and promotions. So you will see as part of the demonstration how the Zora platform enables that level of flexibility that is needed to succeed in this business. Um, as Travis mentioned, this also creates a lot of uh, back-end processing on your order management. This is not your one-time order anymore. It's not, I configured a piece of hardware, it was delivered, and I paid for it. This is a recurring business where the subscription itself may have usage-based charges as well as recurring monthly, quarterly rates. And the billing engine in the back end now needs to process this. There is information that is being sent into the billing engine. It needs to measure, rate, and then bill for it. And then following that, the payment operations. Is it electronic credit card payments, ACH? Um, no, electronic checks you want to support, or just do the traditional invoices for corporate accounts. Certainly account, customer account management, 360 degree view of your customer, making it all self-service, low touch, uh, so that if that change has to be managed, or I want to add four more units into my uh, service, I want to move from the silver to the gold plan, let the customer do it themselves and make it as easy and simple uh, as ordering uh, traditional software. So those are some key considerations that we have actually documented, and you can download that blueprint from our website. But today, I will go ahead and uh, walk through some of those in the demonstration. So with that, let me just switch over to my demonstration environment. So here I am. Um, in the Zora e-commerce platform. We truly are software as a service. So our infrastructure is out there in the cloud, highly configurable, open with APIs, standard-based APIs, flexible. I'm going to start with the product catalog first. This is where we talked about how we need to support the various models. Um, as you see here, I have quite a few products created. Whether it's offering cloud as pay-as-you-go, which is consumption-based my small, medium, large virtual machines that I want to charge for with bandwidth included, or reserve clouds with higher SLAs and support built in, or just business services, product uh, built on per user, per seat basis. These are all the different types of products you're probably thinking about, uh, the ability to go create them and price for them, but then also build for them. So let's look at this cloud pay-as-you-go model. Here, I have created a few offers. The pay-as-you-go plan can have um, one-time recurring usage base, a variety of different charges. We support 32 plus uh, different configurable uh, charge models out of the box. As pay-as-you-go model, maybe you want to add an activation fee, just because this kind of drives 
an interest in the service. So this is a one-time charge. It's very simple, flat fee, and you're going to charge, let's say, $199 for signing up for the service. Now let's look at what else we have. On the recurring charges, traditionally service providers have built for just the usage itself. But we are seeing a shift towards making it more re recurring, which is generate those charges or access that and uh, build that uh, customer in advance. So in this model, we have 50 gigabytes of storage built into the virtual machine. What does that look like? All I need to do is, is define that charge model. It tells me what type of storage I get. It's a per unit charge model in this case. And it is priced at 25 cents a gigabyte with the 50 gigabytes included. So when a customer signs up for one or more of these virtual compute resources, they get 1250 charged up front. Recurring charges are built in advance, whereas the usage charges are built in the rears. So in the usage side, based on which configuration they choose, how, what is the power, horsepower of your compute resources, based on that, appropriate rates might apply. I might use two hours of my small configuration that my development team is using, and I may have uh, 10 hours of a, um, a second configuration at the end of the month, or daily, weekly, however you want to feed this information. When this information is fed into Zora, Zora then takes this rate, the usage that came in, and builds appropriately. Um, as an example to show how easy this is to, uh, to configure, I'm going to add a new unit of measure. Let's say you want to start pricing for bandwidth. So let's create bandwidth here as a new unit. And you can differentiate between the bandwidth out, bandwidth in pricing if you like. We'll create a per unit pricing. Um, maybe it's 20 cents per gigabyte. These are the various types of units that we are currently measuring for many of the systems, clouding, cloud systems and platforms out there uh, that we are integrating with, such as uh, VMware, uh, cloud.com, and many others. So uh, bandwidth out 20 cents uh, uh, priced uh, per unit here. What if you wanted to actually do a tiered pricing with some amount of bandwidth included? Very easy. Let's just select the bandwidth again. I'm going to say the first 10 gigabytes is actually free. And anything over that is charged up to 50 at the 20 cents. And this is now per unit. And then let me just add one final tier to say anything over that is at 17 cents. So very quickly, you see, you have come in here and added a new unit to measure. You, have, you can define it per unit, tiered, or however. You can include X amount for free even in the, in the pricing. Go in and create some of my billing triggers. This is going to be billed on a monthly basis. Bill date is default from the customer. And there we go. We added a new unit created as part of our pay-as-you-go plan. When this customer signs up, they will be charged up front for the storage, and then everything else on a usage-based um, uh, way would be computed in the back end. Let's take another example. Whether it's cloud or whether it's software as a service being uh, provisioned in the cloud, we are finding everybody wants to do free trials and promotions and discounting because you want to get that, have that customer captured first. Let them taste it. Let them feel it. Let them try it out. Cloud is all about trying and buying. As a result, the pricing for it should be very easy to configure as well. So I'm going to go ahead and create a clone of this product plan. I'm going to call this my pay-as-you-go plan first month free. One month free offer. OK, that's great. Now where do I create my free offering? Let's go ahead and say discount the first month, free month. This time around, as for the different charge models, I'm going to pick the discount percent. And I'm going to say discounted 100% for the first month. And thereafter, and if you wanted to make it a three-month trial, uh, you know, one-month trial, all you have to do is define your month here. So there, I'm going to once again set these conditions in here. 
And I can define this discount to be only on my storage or only on the usage charges. So, however, let's just make it a free month for this pay-as-you-go plan. So, as you notice, I am able to, first of all, charge for one time the recurring as well as any usage components. As part of recurring, you may start seeing adding support into it, $500 uh, on an annual basis. So now we are mixing billing periods even. Monthly charge for storage, but charge annual for the support license. And this is configured as part of one product and let the billing engine take the, do the heavy lifting to determine when to bill and how to bill for that. So now that all my product and pricing is configured, I will go ahead and allow um, the customers to buy this. So let's move on to the online commerce side of things because it should be as easy for the customer to come online and sign up for one of these services and then, of course, get complete visibility. So as part of our solutions, we also offer the hosted compliance storefront that you can enable your customers to come in, put their credit card on file, and, and register. Once registered, they would go into your service and start provisioning and using the system and then get billed periodi pre periodically based on how you have set up these pricing. So I'm going to play the role of a customer, really like these on-demand service that you created. So let me go grab that plan. And I got a promo uh, or a marketing message saying there is a, a free trial going on for a month. Let me go ahead and sign up for that. As part of the sign up, let me put my name in here, sign up. Of course, this would be integrated with your own provisioning and um, directory services. But the point here is you are capturing the customer's account information. You can now capture the credit card uh, or any other bill uh, uh, method. Uh, payment method uh, option, and once all is done, I'm ready to purchase. So at this point, we capture the customer, we process their credit card on the file um, through the gateways that are pre-configured in Zora. We have signed them up for a subscription and provided them any discount or bill them for whatever was at the start of the subscription. As a customer, I can go in and come in here and view all of this anytime. So again, this goes to the self-service aspect of it. Doing business in the cloud should be as easy as being able to go in and on order new shoes or a dress, or for that matter, new compute resources. So if I go in here now, I can come in, update my profile. You can have your customer manage the customers uh, and have them come in and update credit cards. Electronic processing, credit card processing becomes painful when you're not able to proactively manage it. So they can come in, update their profile, or view all their transactions, whether it's their invoices or payments. This one is free. Remember, we had this customer a free trial. So the first month is absolutely free. But the invoice itself, you can mail it. You can make it available right here. The customer calls up, customer service. Over time, they don't have to. They can go directly onto their account see what plan they're on, their offer, when is it valid, and what they were charged. And here we are, we've gotten the first month free, both on the cloud storage as well, uh, gigabyte storage, as well as the activation fee. Now, also we talked about how this customer can upgrade and, and manage their own life cycle. So access to the subscription as well as the ability to go sign up for other products and services can also be made self-service with the Zora product um, uh, and platform. Um, let me move on to the last phase of the demonstration, which is going, let's go back into the system and look at this customer profile. What do you have and what you can manage about this this customer. Here's the new customer that we just added. Their complete um, a billing profile, key metrics, this one is the account balance is zero, but the account, invoice, credit balance, all is available. How much you are getting from a monthly recurring revenue perspective. Um, metrics like those, MRR, TCV, they're all readily available in the Zora system. Um, their payments, 
any transaction history, any failures, again, all reported so you can proactively manage this customer. And then, of course, the subscription, the invoices, and the payment. I'm going to take another example. We've processed some, some usage. So following through, let's say this customer, here's another customer that you're managing. Their credit card is on file. They're billed on the, on the any day of the month. And here are the multiple subscriptions that they might be signing up for. So the subscriptions itself could be for the whole entity or an enterprise or for larger accounts. Maybe the HR department is asking for their own virtual uh, private data center and the finance is asking for theirs. As a result, you need the ability to to provide uh, a usage report and build Pepsi uh, US for all services that all the different departments are, um, are actually consuming. So this is an example of that being set up as multiple subscriptions built to one central enterprise and all details about the invoice payments and the usage that has been consumed for this readily available uh, at your fingertips as well as something that you can enable your customers to have access to. So, um, in, in summary, I just want to walk through what we did. We went ahead and created new pricing models for the cloud, from recurring to usage, adding a bandwidth as a new unit that you want to uh, meter and bill for. We created a free trial. We had a customer sign up for that free trial, capture that credit card, and even invoice them for the first bill and showed the discount on their invoice. And lastly, as the customer progresses and uses this system, the usage is consumed within Zora and appropriate invoices and payments are charged on that account on a regular basis. And then giving you all this insight at your fingertips um, is, is the value that Zora provides to all businesses that are, that are emerging in the cloud. With that, we will move on back to Q&A. Thank you very much, Madhu. So we're going to uh, deal with the questions. We have quite a few questions. Uh, one of the most common questions we have is, will this presentation be made available? And the answer is yes. We will make this presentation available to all people who are attending uh, and those who have missed the event. So I'm going to switch back here to another screen while we deal with the questions and answers and a quick wrap up. Okay, I'm going to turn the time back over to Travis for just a minute, and he's going to do a quick uh, summary, and then we're going to do the uh, questions and answers. Great. Thanks, Grover. Thank, thanks, Madhu. So, you know, really to summarize and wrap up, um, you know, if you already a cl are a cl cloud provider and you need to bill, meter, and price, uh, obviously uh, we'd love to talk. If you're not yet and you're thinking about it, becoming a cloud provider has never been easier. Uh, many of you that may be in the traditional hosting business that are thinking about cloud, um, you know, we would love to talk. We believe that Z-Commerce for the cloud uh, and our blueprint for the cloud really will help you provide the on-ramp. Uh, you know, we've done this many, many times uh, with many, many companies. Um, we, uh, we think we've got, uh, you know, got, got not only a solution, but the ability to execute with our professional services team. So we want to help you build your cloud infrastructure. We want to help you blueprint what you need to do for the cloud, and uh, we want to help you make money in the cloud. So I guess now, Rover, should we take some questions? Sure, let's take some questions. Okay, I've got several questions here queued up. Again, you can ask questions via the uh, question panel over on the right-hand side. If you can't find it, there should be a little golden asterisk in your uh, task tray down there. Just bring that to the forefront. You'll be able to see the question panel. So the first kind of type of question we have is, what types of pricing and charging models are you seeing in the cloud? Travis, I'm going to ask you to handle that, but try to get sort of the quick version because that's a big question. That is a big question, Grover. Yes, we're seeing, um, you know, we touched on it a little bit, and Madhu touched on it in the demo, but uh, we're seeing many, many different uh, kinds of usage-based pricing, and I mean, we've got folks that, you know, deliver emails, and we've got, you know, per email, per thousand emails, per hundred emails. We've got usage based on hours. Uh, we've got uh, one-time fees. Many companies have maybe a setup fee. Uh, we see, you know, monthly flat fees. We see monthly flat recurring fees that include usage. We see volume, tiered, overage. Uh, you know, to summarize, 
we see a lot of different usage-based models. We see a lot of combinations. And again, one of um, you know, our strengths is the ability to uh, you know, create those charge models that meet your unique needs and combine them together and then iterate them as customers' needs change. Right. On other events, thanks, Travis. On other events, we actually talk a lot more about our innovation cycle where we're actually coming out with new feature releases every month. Uh, and this is particularly attractive to our customers because they stay continuously integrated with us. They don't have to install anything, and yet new features show up for them. And one of the most common requests we get as the cloud has evolved, of course, is new kinds of metered billing. And since we're working with a large number of cloud service providers, we get an early warning about what kinds of new meet metrics are being used, and it, we integrate that in with our monthly releases as fast as we can. Okay, the next question is, I think some of this was it was answered in the demo. Let's go ahead and, and deal with the questions as they are, though. Is what types, uh, can you combine more than one unit of measure together in your pricing? So let's go for quick answers. Uh, can we combine more than one unit of measure? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, another question here is, can we deal with credit cards? Again, I know this is dealt with in the demo, but people specifically uh, dialed in and said, you know, can I actually uh, manage credit card usage of customer information online? And uh, there's a sidecar question to that, which is, how do I protect my own company from you know, fraud problems internally? Yeah, that's a great question, and we did we we just kind of touched on it briefly. But uh, we have a lot of customers that deal with uh, electronic payments, uh, credit cards in particular. Uh, as many people probably know, uh, one of the requirements in this marketplace is uh, PCI compliance. Uh, the payment card industry uh, is a it's sort of an industry group that is uh, spearheaded by Visa. Uh, we are PCI compliant. We're a member of that organization. Uh, what that means is that uh, we have to deal with many, many layers of standards around encryption and safety, uh, encryption and transport, encryption and storage. Uh, but the short answer is we've connected to all the major uh, payment gateways that will get you to all the major uh, merchant banks and uh, ultimately to your own bank. Uh, so that you can securely credit cards online, uh, and that includes all the intended things like, what about when these expire? What if they don't uh, go through the first time? How do I rerun them? So we can cover Z payments in a, in a you know in a different uh, webinar, but the short answer is yes, we do deal with the credit cards. So we deal with all the aspects of the credit cards that have an alternative payment, such as PayPal. That's exactly right. We do deal with PayPal uh, as well. So. PayPal is uh, quite a popular uh, payment method, uh, you know, uh, even for people that aren't on eBay, uh, and we do see a lot of customers using it. And uh, we also see a lot of exciting new uh, non-credit card electronic payment methods, uh, you know, coming down the pipe. And it, you know, obviously ACH is one that we've been seeing for a long time, but uh, we are seeing, especially in Europe, many, many new kinds of uh, forms of electronic payment emerging. Right. Okay. What's a typical deployment time? You know, good question. Um, we've had customers that have gone live in as little as uh, eight days, and that was the use case that we talked about, Grover, billing in a box. We have very large enterprise customers, um, you know, people like uh, Reed and others, where, you know, the timeline is more like 90 days. Uh, and then we have everybody in between, and it really depends on, uh, you know, is this a brand new customer, a brand new use case? Do we have to migrate data? What's the volume of data that we need to migrate? What types of systems are we connecting to? So as I mentioned before, we've got a very capable services team that can very quickly um, you know, get out uh, you know, sort of some details around what it might take, but we'd love to engage and, and have the chance to talk about that. Thank you. Another question is, you showed different metrics and ways of measuring and metering, such as gigabytes or a number of emails sent. How does that data get into the Zora system so that Zora can bill the end user for it? That's a very good question. Should I give that to Madhu? Yeah, let's think, um, certainly, as Travis actually mentioned before, our system is very open. There are APIs that are available that you use to feed in, uh, in that usage, and then Zora's billing and rating engine picks up that appropriate uh, unit of measure, how much was consumed, and then generates the bill. We are also, uh, we have both pre-integration to some of those um, uh, services that are offered today, such as VMware's the Cloud Express, with our customer blue lock that has been integrated um, and fed into Zora directly. 
Similarly, uh, Cloud.com is another customer where we have integrated there with their VMOps system and are taking that feed directly. So over time, you will see a lot of these connectivity and adapters to known systems and infrastructures being available along with the platform. Thank you, Madhu. And there, we have a couple questions here about ecosystem partners, and I'll call out the QuickBook ones. Uh, so Travis, do we integrate in with QuickBooks? Absolutely, we integrate with QuickBooks. Yes, um, we have a standard integration with QuickBooks, and there's a couple of different flavors to it, depending on how you set up your uh, your customer accounts and ledgers in QuickBook, uh, QuickBooks, but absolutely we do. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have several questions that are marked as private questions, and you can send private questions to us, by the way, even after the event. All you have to do is reply to the invitation you got for this event today about an hour ago. Uh, there was a reminder. If you reply to that, we will be able to get back to you right away with answers to your questions. If you have asked a private question on this event, we will get back to you. There are lots of questions uh, around integration, and some of those are sort of what I call plumbing level questions. We're not going to open up uh, all of that here. But one of the key things is we have a very strong ecosystem. Uh, we partner well and broadly. And I think that if we went, if we were to have a session just on what integration looks like, uh, it would be a very rich session because we have so many connectors and partners. But again, again, what's the typical deployment time for a medium-sized business? It's less than a month. So we've got that built into the product. It's ready to go. We do appreciate your time. I thank very much, uh, Travis. Thanks for attending and, and being the speaker. Um, Adu, thanks for a great demo. Uh, we do appreciate everyone's interest in this topic. If you have any questions, send us a follow-up email, and we will be sending a follow-up email with a video link to this recorded webinar and also a PDF slide deck. Thank you very much.